welcome to a new video. Today, instead of taking out the Honda Navi, which I've used in a lot of the recent videos, I'm taking out an e-bike because it is cold out. It's pretty chilly. And I didn't feel like screwing with the choke and everything to get the Navi started and running properly, so just hopped on the e-bike because they don't really have to deal with that. The only... Now, if you have a fuel-injected bike, which the Navi is not, then you don't really have to worry about some of that st stuff to the same extent. Um, an electric bike, it'll start up immediately and, and run. Just the only thing with the electric is that the battery performance will be worse in cold weather. So, you might get a little bit, risk, uh, a little bit less range out of it. than you would on a normal, you know, 70 degree Fahrenheit temperature day. So I'm just kind of riding through some back area, some, some roads back through the highlands. So currently I'm on Edge Hill Road. This is gonna be Lauderdale Road. And, uh, it's always, I always thought this was an interesting looking apartment building that's over here. The Spring Castle Apartments does have kind of a castle look to it. But, uh, yeah, so that's why I took, took the e-bike out. Just, uh, figure I'd take it for a ride. I hadn't ridden this one in a while, so. And it's a pretty chilly day. It's the mid to upper 30s. And this is turning on to Speed Avenue, I believe. I've ridden through Cherokee Park about a million times and currently there is some construction going on around the Hogan's Fountain where they're redoing the ground around that. So that area is kind of torn up and then they have um, a bridge. It's kind of by the base of Cochrane Hill or, uh, or somewhere around there. There's a there's a bridge that's under construction that has parts of things closed off. Um, so I have, uh, I didn't really have, have the desire to ride through just part of the park. And there's pedestrian paths, but since this is an electric bike, I don't really take those on off-road trails. You know, like the mountain bike trails or hiking trails that are heavily used by pedestrians and bikes. Just because the bikes are heavier. And I think the main thing about an e-bike that can cause more damage to the trails than a standard bike, you know, even if the bike, let's say the bike weighs 100 pounds and you have a rider on it that's 200 pounds, so you total 300. You know, you could have a non-electric bike that has, that weighs 10 pounds and has a rider that weighs 350. So it's not necessarily the weight. I think it's more just an e-bike can continue to provide torque and spin the tire when you get stuck. So if you're going up a hill where you have a little bit of trouble getting traction, the back tire can just spin a lot and, and tear things up and throw dirt. So I think that's the main concern. And, you know, from the times I've went through the bike trails that go through Chinake, uh, Cherokee and Seneca Park um, on foot and just hike through, they're pretty tactical. And I don't really want to take this through because then that's where you're going through and having to do huge jumps 
and stuff like that, which on a, you know, mountain bike that doesn't weigh much, not a big deal. On this thing that does have a little bit of weight to it, probably not the best. But I think where this would be a ton of fun is to go to areas where it's just kind of dirt trails. So you can just kind of rip through, you know, at high speed, do whatever you want. That would probably be pretty fun. But there's not really anything around here like that. Or at least anything that I've seen pretty close within riding distance where I wouldn't have to load this on a trailer and take it somewhere. Uh, let's see if this light will last. Alright. So this thing, I'll ride it on the streets for the most part, and I'll take it off. The grass here and there, I think um, what might be fun is to take this... Um, if I have relatives that have property out in the kind of middle of nowhere in Kentucky, this might be fun to take out there. Because, um, you know, they already have dirt bikes and four-wheelers and stuff. It's just this is quieter and lighter. The way the, uh, the street parking is here it makes it a little bit difficult to see if cars are coming. Because uh, if you're from the area, from Louisville, Kentucky, they've done a bunch of renovations to Bardstown Road where they put, um, they put um, some concrete sections where they have um, trees and vegetation in them to stick out in the road and kind of block off where parking starts and where it stops. And then, uh, so I guess the idea there is to provide more street parking. And it, went, it took some sections that used to be, you know, two lanes in both directions and made them one lane. Um, so it provided more on-street parking. And technically, you know, theoretically would, would slow stuff down, slow traffic down going through those areas, which when you have, uh, when you have bars and restaurants, you're trying to encourage, you know, foot traffic and people to dine outdoors, that would be positive. So I think, uh, it's interesting. I don't really like riding the e-bikes down uh, Bardstown Road, even down in the section uh, where it's a little bit slower. Because uh, people still get very, very impatient. And I think they generally think if you're on a bike, you don't really deserve <laughs> any portion of the road. So even if you're cruising along with traffic and pretty close to the speed limit, people still will kind of pass you relatively dangerously. And I know I've gone through a lot of these roads before, so I'm just trying to cut through a path I may not have gone through all that often. Obeying uh, these stop signs. <laughs> and it's uh, late March. It's March 19th. Um, so you would think that it would be relatively warm because we had had, you know, in February record high temperatures uh, in some weeks where, you know, for a given date there would be, you know, high temperature set, you know, like in the 70s, almost 80. And then it drops back down to be below freezing or near below freezing during the day. Which, you know, it's not uncommon depending on the part of the country you live in. And then 
I believe up ahead that's Grinstead which can be somewhat difficult to cross Not so much that time, luckily. Yeah, since it's relatively cold today, I've got the uh, the cold weather um, gloves, and I've got a uh, fleece pullover on under my jacket. And I'm wearing some uh, fleece pants that uh, make things a little bit warmer. And uh, the the concrete wall or the, the brick wall that was just ahead, that was for the um, Cave Hill Cemetery, which is in this area. Uh, they have you know, relatively large walls on the uh, perimeter of the property. And that's, you know, a very ornate, famous cemetery. Uh, you know, it was in the news in the past handful of years or decades. Uh, Muhammad Ali was buried there when he passed away. And it houses other celebrities like Colonel Sanders and different people and just a huge huge property with a lot of ornate statues and um, grave designs I'm not really sure what it costs to get a plot there I would assume uh, it's not cheap uh, because it's in a city area it's relatively confined to a specific location so there's like a finite amount of space so you're not really going to expand it out. Uh, so now I'm just kind of still in the Highlands area, kind of going towards uh, Barrett Avenue, which um, I don't know if it's technically considered the Highlands on the other side of this, but. It's somewhat of a dividing line between the Highlands and uh, Germantown. Ah, damn it. I didn't hit the turn signal. Yeah, and the reason I did not go through Cave Hill... Oh, well, this is not a through street. <laughs> the reason I didn't go through Cave Hill is they don't allow bicycles or motorcycles. Even though I've been there before and seen people go through, uh, I'm not sure they have a super robust enforcement mechanism. I'm not sure they're calling police to hand out tickets if a single person on a motorcycle rides through and then leaves. Um... I think, uh, but I think it's, you know, a cemetery. Uh, probably you should show some level of respect and, and not go against their rules. Um, and I do understand why they don't want, you know, a group of 50 Harleys to go through. Because there's a bunch of wildlife there. You know, usually every weekend if you go there, you'll see wildlife photographers or people doing bird watching, what have you. And you don't really want a huge rumbling amount of sound going through. And then with cyclists on, you know, road bikes, you probably don't want a group of people going through, you know, two or three wide, ten deep. So you have like 30, 20, 30 people going through. So you probably don't want that to go through either. And make it difficult for cars to get through that are actually trying to go there and visit loved ones or for people walking to get through. Uh, I guess 
I'll go this way. This is East Oak Street. So this is when you start getting into, I'm not sure exactly what neighborhood this will qualify as, but um, possibly Germantown or the edge of the Highlands or somewhat close to Shelby Park. Oh, the train's going. But yeah, there's a lot of um, interesting neighborhoods for this area. There has been, uh, you know, some of the neighborhoods had kind of a revitalization in terms of interest and home property values. me to go around the train tracks completely there was a bike lane on this road it's uh, Kentucky Street and then the uh, unfortunate thing if you're wanting to cycle across the city is most of the cases where there are bike lanes uh, they exist and then they just abruptly end. And if you're on an e-bike that can do a little bit faster than, you know, 15 miles per hour, it's not as big of a concern, but if you're, uh, you know, on a standard pedal bike, uh, it's not nice or fun when you're riding along at a nice little clip and then the bike lane ends and you have to be on the street with traffic doing 35 miles per hour. And the bike lanes are not always uh, free and accessible. There's a uh, cemetery up here that actually does not have rules forbidding motorcycles or bikes that I figured I might swing through because it is still, they're still open, they close at 5 and they don't wrap up. This is the St. Louis Cemetery. It's just always interesting to me when you have locations like this in, in the middle of, you know, neighborhoods. Uh, I wouldn't really say this area is the suburbs, but you know, when you have it in the middle of kind of dense, you know, neighborhoods, it's always interesting to have, you know, large cemeteries like this. Um, and in the area, there's a few, because there's this one, uh, there's Cave Hill, uh, there's another one down um, Newburgh Road um, as well. So there's a few, there's a few relatively large cemeteries. Through this e-bike, I'm not sure, I mean, cause I, the, the audio setup I use now versus what I used to, I think it's not 
as loud as it used to be. Um, so I used to just have a GoPro with, oh, this doesn't go through, with the media mod uh, just connected to my helmet. And then with the microphone recording, uh, the rear facing microphone. So we get my voice well enough, but the bike could be kind of loud. Um, as opposed to now, I have a microphone clipped on the inside of my helmet that I use to get audio. So it gets a little bit less wind noise, a little bit less ambient noise. Because I know like the, this bike would be a little bit louder on the other setup because the microphone is literally just right here catching all of the noise the bike makes. As opposed, if you're just standing on the side of the road, you don't really even hear this until it's immediately next to you and then it's gone and you don't hear it anymore. Uh, so it's not super loud. Especially when you consider, you know, an actual like gas dirt bike or dual sport motorcycle or something tend to be pretty loud. This thing's pretty quiet. So that's why I'd be interested in taking it uh, out to some, you know, some trails out in the middle of nowhere because you're not making a ton of noise. Uh, so that's the other thing. You're not going to draw random people to, to where you're at because they can hear all the noise. Because, you know, once you're a little bit away from this thing, you can't really hear it. Yeah, so that was taking this uh, this e-bike out. It's a uh, Segway X260. Uh, has a pedal kit on it. And since it's a Segway, it has the app where you can go in and change all the performance parameters. So if I ride it out in the daytime like this, I set all the power and torque all the way to the lowest settings. So it's more comparable than like my to like a Super 73 uh, bike that I've got. Yeah, so this is uh, St. Louis Cemetery on uh, Barrett Avenue in Louisville, Kentucky. But yeah, so that's it. Till next time. Later.